Hello and welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. I have to start this video with an apology, because I'm keeping things relatively short today. It's been a very busy time here at Always Bored Never Boring HQ, and I have a lot of different things I am working on. Please keep watching for some, hopefully, fun new videos next week. But, back to today's video. Today is the 17th of May 2024, which is a very special day indeed. It's actually special for three reasons, which you may have guessed from the title of the video. Reason number one is simply this. Today, Mrs. Neverboring and myself are celebrating our 16th wedding anniversary. I'm sure we are going to do something spectacularly exciting to celebrate. Probably putting our two beautiful children to bed, opening a bottle of wine, and falling asleep on the couch watching a piss-poor horror film. Admittedly, that is a pretty standard Friday night around these parts, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Reason number two is, you have done it yet again. Through your incredible support, watching my videos, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, you have all helped the channel to reach and then immediately blow through the 18,000 subscriber milestone. We have had a significant influx of new subscribers in recent weeks, and it has been really exciting to watch the numbers growing. 18,000 is a terrifyingly large number, but I am very proud we have made it, and honestly, it is all thanks to you. Of course, we don't want to stop at 18,000. We want to keep on going. Way back at the start of the year when I was making my 16,000 subscriber special, I was thinking, wouldn't it be crazy if we could have 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year? It seemed like a stretch that Mr. Fantastic would think twice about, but here we are, already closing in on 18,200 subscribers. So, maybe? Maybe. We can't do it without your continued help though, so please, keep on watching, keep on liking and commenting. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and also, if you have already subscribed, please could you check your subscriber status. It seems that sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe people from certain channels, so it is worth occasionally making sure. Also, please make sure you have your channel notifications switched on and ideally set to all, so you don't miss any of my videos or community posts. I also keep being told I should do YouTube shorts, so I don't know, maybe you'll see a bit more of that stuff on the channel when the mood takes me. Regardless, thank you all. I appreciate your support so much, I really do mean that. Now, let's move on to our third and final reason to celebrate. Yes, the 17th of May 2024 is the retail release date of White Dwarf Magazine Issue 500. Hurrah, etc, etc, and so on and so forth. This is a huge milestone for White Dwarf, and it's already sold out on the Games Workshop web store in the UK, and pretty much all online retailers that I checked. So, well done Games Workshop. You always manage to put the special in special occasion. Don't worry though, you can still get copies on eBay where they are being listed for upwards of £40 plus shipping and where some sellers have in excess of 10 copies available. Good grief. I actually cancelled my long-standing subscription to White Dwarf quite some time ago because there just wasn't enough content in there that interested me. But recently there has been a fair amount of new material for Warhammer Quest Cursed City tucked within the magazine and issue 500 does include one new hero with which to cleanse the streets of Olfenkarn. That being the case, I did want to get this issue, and luckily I managed to snag one of the two copies at my local friendly game store. I hope everybody that wants the magazine also finds it at their local stores or favourite online retailers without having to turn to eBay, as it is a shame that those kinds of shenanigans are going to overshadow what should be a cool moment in White Dwarf history. Now, in fairness, being a milestone issue, even without the inclusion of Cursed City content, I probably would have picked this up anyway, and there are a few fun celebratory articles. There is a neat 12-page history of the magazine highlighting special issues throughout its 47-year run. Being big into nostalgia and generally being much more interested in the Games Workshop games from years past rather than the company's modern output, this sort of article is right up my street. And this is followed by a really interesting heavy metal article where painters were challenged to paint dioramas that could be photographed as if they were the cover of the commemorative 500th issue. Some of these are absolutely exceptional, the kind of thing you could look at for a very long time, marvelling at the details, the posing, the techniques. Some of them, while technically incredible, not so much. This leads into a chunky section on the White Dwarf himself. 
rules for using him in a variety of games including Cursed City, a mini game pitting the White Dwarf against the Horde of Goblin Stabbers, designer notes on the new commemorative White Dwarf miniature and of course a painting guide. For me, obviously, the most interesting thing is the Cursed City rules, which I will look at momentarily. But before we get there, we need to talk about the bonus goodies. As this is such a special issue, there is a bunch of free, uh, extra content. There's a really cool poster. One side shows the cover of the 500th issue, while the reverse, which is much better, has every piece of cover art for all 500 issues. I'm not generally a big fan of posters, especially when they are ruined by creases in them from where they have been folded, but even I might have to get this one framed up because it's such a neat thing to see all the covers I remember so well in one place. I can even pinpoint the first ever White Dwarf magazine I bought from a WH Smith in the 80s. It's right there. There is also a promo flyer to get 15% off the special White Dwarf Limited Edition merchandise collection. It's only valid until the 19th of May, and considering this magazine didn't hit retail until the 17th, Games Workshop aren't giving you much time to think. The collection, by the way, is £160 for a hoodie, a t-shirt, a disc plate, a notebook, and six postcards in a box. You get this cute little 40k munchkin card, it lets you go up a level, but you're still going to be playing munchkin, so it's not that great. Finally, you get three card inserts comprising one double-sided battle plan, 40k on one side, Age of Sigmar on the reverse, five cards for using the White Dwarf in Underworld's Death Gorge, two cards for using the White Dwarf in Warcry, one War Scroll for using the White Dwarf in Age of Sigmar, and one card for using the White Dwarf in Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I guess Old World players don't get any new rules. Sucks to be them. Oh, and uh, you also get one of those blank bunker achievement cards that Games Workshop seems to think should be included with every issue. One of the important things to note about all this content, other than the fact that finally, finally, we have Cursed City content printed on the card insert so we don't have to photocopy anything, is that the cards aren't designed to work in isolation. They all have additional rules printed inside the magazine. For Underworlds, there are full rules for a two-player variant game using the White Dwarf. For Warcry, there is an extra battle plan. And for Warhammer Quest, there are additional one-man army rules and an extra chart. I mention this only in case anybody out there is just trying to pick up the cards for the games they play and think they can skip on the magazine. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go through all the different cards and what they do. I've never played Warcry, I haven't played Age of Sigmar for an age, and I haven't touched Underworld since the start of Season 2, so I'm not in a position to talk about that stuff with any kind of authority. So let's cut to the chase and talk about something I do know. Curse City. Grombrindle the White Dwarf is a one-man army. That means you aren't going to be using him in your regular Cursed City campaigns. He's way too strong to be part of a team, and no effort has really been made to balance him for team play or the different types of challenges a campaign can throw at you. Instead, you were just supposed to pick any type of journey, the recommendation is a hunt, and then you toss the dwarf into the fray to see how he gets on. And you play pretty much as normal, except no crises will ever occur, and there is a special one-man army event table to roll on which is printed in the magazine. The White Dwarf is a Lore Master with four activation slots. He is Move 3-3, Agility D6, Defense D12, and Vitality 2D12. He has two weapon actions. One is a ranged attack requiring an activation dice of four or more, which rolls 2D12 and causes two damage or four on a crit. The second is a melee attack requiring an activation dice of one or more, which also rolls 2D12, but inflicts three damage as standard or six on a crit. That is a huge amount of damage, and he's going to be able to apply it pretty consistently, whether he's at range or up in the enemy's grill. He has three unique abilities, one of which is tied to his Path of Glory rules. His Seen It All Before ability means he can never gain ailments. If he ever would receive an ailment, instead he gains an inspiration point. The ability, Ask Me That Again, I Dare You, triggers whenever a hostile attacks him, but deals no damage. Grombrindle can immediately make a free weapon action or a recuperate action. Finally, he has the absolutely bonkers Runes of Rebounding. If he uses an activation dice with a value of 6 to use his ranged attack, that attack is made once for every visible hostile as his axe goes flying around the room bonking everybody in the head. That is going to absolutely clean up against smaller swarm-based enemies. Once Grombrindle inspires, his vitality increases to 3d12, which is ludicrous. His ranged attack can be activated with a dice with a value of 3 or more, rolls 2d12 and 2d6, and causes 3 wounds or 5 on a crit, while his melee attack also starts rolling 2d12 and 2d6, inflicting 4 wounds or 7 on a crit. 
His runes of rebounding now trigger when he activates his ranged attack with a 5 or 6 instead of just a 6, and he gains the new ability, You Just Aren't Trying Hard Enough, which reduces damage he suffers by 1 to a minimum of 0. What an absolute tank. Of course, the idea here is you are supposed to use this card with the brand new White Dwarf miniature, which has just come out, and which retails for £25 in the UK. But you can pretty much use any previous iteration of the White Dwarf you have in your collection, or just any old Dwarf miniature for that matter. Personally, I'm not that into the one-man army stuff, because it doesn't really integrate into the standard game, and I would never purchase a miniature specifically for use with one-man army rules but they are fun for a quick one-off blast if you want to let off some steam by playing a crazy overpowered character that can decimate most foes instantly. It is also really nice to finally get a Cursed City card on actual card. But having said that, this is probably one for big fans and completionists. Certainly not something worth the prices the magazine is going for on eBay. But I think that's about all I have to say about that. There is a bottle of wine and a bad movie waiting for me, so I'm going to put my feet up. Thank you once again for all your incredible support helping the channel to reach the 18,000 subscriber milestone. And as always, if you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.